it a deepening inspiration hub here so there was a new version of the ata checker note client that was released just yesterday um this is version 1.0.1.10 and today i'm going to do a tutorial to take you through how we're going to update this if you are using linux so if you're using windows this is always easy just uninstalling the old application downloading the new application and installing the new application for linux there are a few commands that we always have to tackle and that's why i always push out a new video whenever there's a new update released i would highly recommend that you subscribe to my channel and like this video as well because this helps support my channel for, for me to be able to bring you more videos like this so as usual i always provide a pdf document that you can just copy and paste the commands that we're going to use here to make the whole update process smooth for you so what we're going to need is we're going to first have to open the console so i have opened my console and we're going to start executing the commands now the first thing that we're going to have to do is to close the old application that is running so we do this by using the command pkill eta checker cl so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to type ps minus e like i said in my tutorial and we're going to find out the applications that are running so you see that as always we have the ata checker service running and we also have the ata checker clients so the service is the application that is always going to ensure that the application is running in the background and this ata checker cl is basically where we do the steps like delegation creating a new wallet exporting the wallet and stuff like that now the service we can leave running but what we're going to kill is the ata checker client so i'm just going to copy this command here i'm going to go to the console i'm going to right click and i'm going to press paste and i'm just going to enter so what this has done is that this has killed the application now we're going to continue to step two so if you already have the node running in a screen you're going to have to first i'm going to first kill the screen application so that i don't have several instances of the screen running please be sure that if you are running other applications that are running in the screen on your node you do not have to use this command i'm just going to go to the console i'm going to paste this in i think i didn't copy i'm just going to try this again i'm going to come here I'm going to paste this in still not working i'm just going to type this in so the command oh i think it was just taking a while to load i'm going to close the clean this and i'm just going to enter this and i have basically killed the application so if you are having multiple instances of your screen running you can use the command screen minus ls find out what screen is running ata and use the command screen minus xs with your screen id and just put quits and this is going to kill the specific screen in my case i'm only running ata on my node and that's why it's very easy for me to do so now what we're going to have to do is also that we if, depending on which version that you have running uh, you would have to download so you would have to delete the old installation files now it's very easy to see which version that you have um downloaded on your directory just put in the command ls so ls is basically going to show you the contents that you have in the folder so you can see in my case i didn't actually delete the version 1.0.1.7 and I also didn't delete the version 1.0.1.8. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete these two. I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to paste this in here. I'm going to press enter. So the commands here basically means remove directory. And this command that you see here is basically the file name. And this is what we have in blue. And the second one is basically going to remove the one that we have in red. So I'm just going to continue with the second one as well. And I'm going to paste this here. And I'm going to press enter. And then whilst I'm at it, I'm also going to delete the old versions of the applications that I had. So I'm just going to copy this as well. I'm going to paste this in here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the section here from the old application, from the old command. So you do not need to do this if you do not have um, the older version of the software running. I just thought that if I have this there, I'm just going to delete it because it just takes space on your drive. So I'm going to delete this. And then next thing i'm going to delete the one that is in red like i said if you if you do not you do not need to do this but i just do this because i like to keep my my server clean i think i made a mistake i'm just going to clear this and i'm going to put in a command so what i want to delete now is the one that is in in red i'm going to copy this i'm going to paste this and i'm going to replace it with this content that i have here the red one here copy and I'm going to paste this in here. I'm going to right click. 
and I'm going to choose paste and I'm going to press enter. So now you see that if I type ls, it should basically look empty because I have deleted the four applications that I have done it. Like I said, this is not a mandatory step, but I just like to do this um, to keep the server clean. Now in the next stage, we're going to move to step four and this is where we're going to download the new version of the application. So this is the command that we're going to use. I'm going to copy this command and I'm going to come to the console and I'm going to paste this. Here, I'm going to take a little bit of time to explain something to you. So what this command basically does is that it tells Linux, go into this URL and copy the application software. Now, I realize that depending on which country that you are, this command or the URL could be different. It could also happen that ATA um, changed the URL. So I'm going to teach you how you can always get the new URL and I would highly recommend that before you use this command just check on the console and make sure that you have sorry check on the ATA um, app and make sure that you have the right command so what we're going to do first I'm just going to copy this command here and I'm going to put this in notepad I'm just going to type open notepad application and I'm going to put in the wget command and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the app and then when you are on the app just click on download checker clients come to CLI for Linux right click and choose copy link Right, so mine is in German, but basically you would find um, one that is called copy the link URL. So I'm just going to copy this. And then when you come to Notepad, basically just erase everything from the last to the HTTPS and just right click and put paste and basically copy this and use this in the command line. So this is always going to get you the latest version of the application. So I'm just going to enter this to download the new software. Then basically the software has finished downloading. So you can see here, this is the name of the new file that is downloaded. ATA checker client, check out CLI Linux 1.0.1.1. Sorry, ATA checker client minus whatever it is. Right, let's skip it. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to extract the software. I'm going to extract the software using this command here. I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to come to the paste and I'm going to paste this in here. So here as well, check depending on which country that you are, the file name could be different. So if yours, for instance, is not, so you can see here the file that we downloaded, right? If you just cross check that everything that you have from this section is the same as what you have at the top here. So if you see any difference, just adapt, adapt it in the command. I'm just gonna press enter to extract the software. And then now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new screen. So if you are doing a fresh installation, then you can install the screen. I can also do this, I wouldn't do anything anyway if I already have this installed. So it's, it has installed the screen to do the latest version. And now I'm going to create a new screen using the screen minus S minus ATA. So you can change this text ATA to whatever that you want it to be. It doesn't necessarily have to be ATA. I just like to do this because I intend running multiple nodes in the future on my VPS server. And then it will be easy to handle if I know within which screen every application is running. I'm just going to press enter here to create a new screen. And then what this is going to do is going to create a new space within which we can work. Now, what we're gonna to have to do now is to enter the directory that is containing the application. To know what a directory is, I'm gonna use the command ls. And then here you can see that I have two files that are there. This is the file that we downloaded, right? The one that is in red. And the one that is in blue is the one that we extracted. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change into the blue directory. I'm gonna use this command, cd means change directory. And this is the name of the directory. So if your directory ends in, for instance, na, or us just make sure that you replace this command with the right file name i'm going to paste this in here then i'm going to press enter and then now we are in the application now what we're going to have to do now is to install a script which is stored in this folder if you want to see the script just type ls and then basically you can see all the things that we have in this folder so you can see that the command that we have here install.sh is the screen command that we have here so we're going to install this with administrative rights. That's why we're going to need a pseudo command. I'm going to paste this in here. I'm going to press enter. And then basically this is going to install the new scripts, which is going to be the service that is going to keep the application always running in the background. So because I had an older version of the application running, that's why it's telling me um, to update. So I have this warning that I have to update the system and service manager. And this is what we're going to do using this command here. I'm just going to come here. I'm going to paste this in here. And I'm going to press enter and then this will basically reload the system and service manager. Now in the next stage, what we're going to have to do is to just um, run the application using this command here. I'm going to come here, paste this in and I'm going to press enter. So it didn't work. Let me, ha let me have a look at what the problem is. So I'm just going to type ls to see the correct file name and let me check what I have. 
okay i see the problem so my word is always auto correcting the commands that i put here so it put a space between the forward slash and the application that is not why it's not working don't worry about this i'm going to correct this um, in the final pdf that i'm going to upload on onedrive so i'm just going to press back and i'm going to clean the space between the forward slash and the application and then now you see that application has has started so what you see is that because i already had the application running i had already a wallet that was installed on the vps server so you see that i have a notification saying wallet auto login success so what i'm going to do is i'm going to run the ether license summary to see if the application is running i'm going to paste this in here and i'm going to press enter and then you see that i have one so my license is checking right and basically checking me so i saw a lot of questions checking means um, it's basically working so whether you have check-in already don't worry about it one is just means that application is waiting for a task and one the other one means that application is actively performing a task so you see that it's very easy when you are already using the same banner address on the owner portal so i can also go to the owner portal to see show you how this is going to look i'm going to connect my wallet here i'm going to put in my password and now now i'm logged in into the owner console i'm going to go to licenses and then what you can see is that my license status is delegated and the running status is also checking. So I did not need to do a new delegation or on delegation and delegation because I'm using the same burner address that I already had on my older application. Now, this is very, very important. If you are doing a fresh installation, um, the software would not automatically import a wallet because you basically do not have any import there in the first place. And in that instance, you're going to use first use this command to enter wallet create on the console to create a new wallet. And then you're going to um, use this command. Um, sorry, I made a mistake here. So you're first going to create exactly, you're going to create a wallet here using this command. And then you're going to go to the ATA on a portal to do the delegation. So you're going to copy what the banner address would be and then come to here on the ATA on a portal. I don't want to on delegate, but basically if you do not have anything, you're going to have here running status free and then basically going to delegate with the banner address that you're going to use. And then we're going to come back into the console, run the ATA license, approve all command. And this would basically approve the delegation and you can go back onto the owner portal and then you will see that your node would be delegated and running now basically the the nice thing that i see with a new application is that like i said they are currently have two instances of the application running you have the service which is always going to make sure that the application is going to run no matter what happens and then you have the client where you can basically do starts with a delegation on delegation and stuff like that now to this end you basically have updated your client you can basically just click close to close the console what i personally like to do is that i like to minimize the application then killing the application completely like i said it doesn't matter you can just close the screen here and then basically you're done what my recommendation would be is that before you leave the console, just press Ctrl A and D to minimize the application. Anytime you want to come back into the console, just use the command screen minus R and then this is going to bring you back into the console. So I'm going to minimize the application before I go. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions, please put this um, in the comment section. What I've also started to do is that if I see that people are struggling heavily um, trying to set up their notes, sometimes I do some one-on-one -on -one free sessions with them. So um, feel free to reach out to me if you're having an exclusive uh, problem setting up your note. If we, I'm able to find a suitable time with you, I would, I would try to do this with you together on a one-to-one -one video. You can reach me on Telegram on this Depend Inspiration Hub. You can also find me on Twitter. So I'll leave a link to my Twitter profile in the description section. Please make sure that you follow me on Twitter because this is where a lot of people who are contacting me are contacting me through. If you have any questions, just come to Twitter, write to me. My, my DM is open and we'll find a suitable slot on how we can solve your problem. Thanks a lot for watching this video and see you in the next one. Bye.